All right, let's uh, go ahead and get started here. Good morning, good day, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Um, welcome to uh, GL's first webinar for 2018. Uh, we're excited about this uh, topic today. Um, just to start out with, we're, we're happy to have um, a lot of our representatives on the, on the line with us. Um, you know, existing customers, potential customers, and so forth. So it's it's always a good way. These webinars are a pretty good way for, I think they're a good way for our representation, um, our worldwide re representation, to learn a little bit about our products. We give a general overview of, of whatever the topic is, and then we show how GL uh, addresses those that topic in, in, in sort of, again, an overview fashion. But it gives uh, a pretty good... Um, you know, summary of, of how we're dealing with these things in the industry. So we're excited about this topic today. Um, the topic is entitled Advanced IP Testing Platforms for High Density Mobile, Voice, Video, and Data Traffic. And this will focus on GL's uh, MAPS RTP HD product, MAPS Packet Load, and Packet Scan HD. These are products that uh, have been out for a little while. They have um, uh, they have predecessors, which we'll talk about, which you're probably very familiar with. And um, now we've added some high density components to these to these products. My name is uh, Matt Yost. Uh, I'll be joined by Abandon and Sanjeev, who will be helping out with the webinar this morning. One other quick announcement before we get rolling. Uh, GL will be attending the World ATM Congress show. ATM stands for Air Traffic Management. So we've got some products that are addressing that market, and we're going to be attending that in Madrid, Spain in early March. So I just wanted to make that announcement. We'll have a booth there, and we'll be showing off those products. So thanks again. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, if you're not familiar with GL, uh, just briefly go over who we are. We're located in the United States in Gaithersburg, Maryland. Uh, it's about 30 miles outside of Washington, D.C. We have a couple of satellite offices, and we have a very good team of sales and support reps throughout the world. Uh, we were founded in 1986, and we primarily consist of two divisions. First is the Test and Measurement Equipment Division, which is commercial off-the-shelf products um, and equipment for telecom engineers and technicians. Uh, they kind of are classified in the, I, I sort of broadly classify them in the intrusive and non-intrusive categories. So we have intrusive testers that maybe simulate different protocols, uh, bulk calling related, you know, feature testing type things on networks. And then we have non-intrusive products, which are primarily monitoring networks and giving you statistics and so forth. So those are sort of the classifications of our, of our products in, broad, in a broad stroke. We also have a second division to our company, which has been servicing uh, local, state, and federal government agencies for since the late 80s. And it's basically engineering consulting services. Uh, so we do a lot of things with transportation industry here in the U.S. So we have a lot of engineers and project managers and technicians that, that help with that. So the webinar agenda for today, I'll go over um, a brief uh, a slide or two about IP traffic statistics and load trends. And then we'll get into how GL uh, creates high-density IP traffic, and we'll focus on three of our products, um, MAPS uh, HD, MAPS Packet Load, and Packet Scan HD. And like I said, at the end, we'll have a question and answer period. So uh, as we get started here, um, I want to talk about an intro to IP load trends and traffic characteristics. And more and more IP traffic, as we know, uh, is is out there. Uh, wireless traffic is booming. Uh, we all know this. Uh, here's a diagram from the International Telecommunications Union showing mobile broadband subscriptions uh, for 2017. And you can notice that worldwide, more than 50% uh, of users are uh, have mobile broadband subscriptions. Um, in the developed world, it's 
it's in the 90, 90 percentile. So we know that this thing is booming. We, we know that it's only going to increase. Uh, the bandwidth, the speed for these connections is ever increasing. These are things we know. I just wanted to show you uh, sort of uh, in a graph here what, what that looks like. And applications are popping up every day. The Internet has uh, created so much opportunity for this type of thing. Um, these applications are contributing a lot to the traffic. Uh, these uh, include applications that are, that are voice related, you know, VoIP phone calls um, from, from business to business, from personal VoIP phone calls, Skype calls, video streaming and movie watching applications, peer-to-peer -peer file transfers and email. All of these things contribute to the traffic. Um, and I even mentioned at the bottom there, you know, some, some gaming. I mean, gaming nowadays has, has, has become um, a pretty uh, uh, popular, and online gaming ha is an is a, is a interesting topic in itself when it comes to real-time type applications. So all of these things that are listed here contribute to the traffic that's being generated. On the right-hand side, the diagram shows what happens in an internet minute. Okay, so you can see there just a couple that I'll mention. 16 million text messages happen in every minute. Um, 3.5 million search queries in Google. That's what they're reporting. Uh, $750,000 spent online every minute. I mean, it's crazy, the, these numbers that we're seeing now. And a majority of this, um, this type of traffic is moving to mobile devices. So uh, you're, you're doing your shopping on your mobile phone. Um, you're making phone calls on your mobile phone. They may be traditional mobile-related phone calls. They may be even voice over IP using Skype as an app. So these things are all moving to the mobile device, um, and these kind of statistics show that. So how does GL generate these high volumes of RTP-related traffic? And we'll focus on RTP first here. We have a product called Maps RTP HD, and that is a product that is a little bit of a evolution from an existing product called Maps. And I'll start by kind of giving you the fundamentals of what Maps means at GL. Uh, some of you probably are very familiar with, with Maps. Uh, it's been GL's standard framework for emulation of IP, TDM, and wireless protocols, plus traffic transmission. So MAPS has been around for a little while. It stands for Message Automation and Protocol Simulation. This is GL's sort of workhorse for product foundation for simulating all types of protocols via those may be TDM related protocols, they may be wireless protocols, they may be IP protocols. All of them are built off of this framework called MAPS. Um, Again, MAPS has been in the marketplace uh, for a very long time. It's very popular um, for doing stress testing, bulk call generation, feature testing, and uh, protocol compliance or um, compliance testing um, for protocols or conformance testing, I'll, I'll say. And um, there's a litany of protocols, as I mentioned. You can see them on the right-hand side here. Um, and that's not even the full list as it's been growing. So MAPS, if you're not familiar with MAPS, it, it does sort of have a three-layer architecture, and those three layers are scripts, messages, and profiles. So when we talk about the scripts, that's sort of the state machine for the protocol engine. And, um, you know, that may be different for GSM as it is for ISDN in the TDM world. We know that. But these scripts are, are, are the protocol state machine. Messages are what are being sent. So if you're talking about, for instance, voice over IP when you're using SIP, let's say. People are generally familiar with SIP. So when the invite message goes out, that invite message has a, um, a host of standard type parameters associated with it. So the generic message template 
is where the message comes from there in our architecture. So an invite.txt maybe, it's a text message that we have. And these messages are very customizable, but the standard one um, is available on our, on our product there. The third layer is sort of the pro profiles layer. So that is very specific information about that particular call. So it may grab the invite standard message and it may put in the contact information from the profile. So we sort of build on ourselves there and the state machine, the scripts are sort of running what happens after you send an invite, how long do you wait until you, you need to hear a response. Those types of things are all within the script. That's sort of at the foundation of how MAPS works. Now, um, as I was mentioning, MAPS has been around for quite a while. We, in this particular webinar, are going to, excuse me, discuss MAPS HD, okay? So we're talking about high density, high density bulk call, advanced bulk call generation. And um, with that, um, we have a product that we refer to even as MAPS RTP HD. So it's an advanced bulk call generator for high volumes of traffic, and, and, and that includes voice and video traffic. It is rack mounted, or it's a portable device, and it comes in a couple flavors here, uh, four times one gig, or two times 10 gig interfaces. So this now, the component we've added with MAPS HD is a hardware component. If you're familiar with MAPS from before, we basically, it's a software uh, offering that uses a Windows-based uh, NIC. So you can put it on your laptop, you can put it on a server in your lab, you can put it in anything that has a NIC card, which everything, everything does. Okay, so you would install a version of software, a MAPS version, and you would use it, um, use it utilizing your NIC. This MAPS HD, we have to provide a, a hardware, uh, a four times one gig hardware or two times 10 gig. And that gives us, obviously with the hardware now, we have the flexibility of increasing the number of calls and so forth. Um, it gives us a lot more um, capacity there. 20,000 endpoints per appliance. Um, we can stack multiple of these appliances and achieve a lot more uh, through a master controller. And it keeps, Many IP and wireless protocols are available here, and we'll talk about some of those. Um, voice and video codecs, all available that we traditionally know with our MAPS product. So this MAPS HD is now um, providing a, lot, a platform for GL and for our users and our customers to create a lot more capacity, high density calling. Um, it has a dedicated hardware there, that's the point. I'd like to make with this with this slide. Okay, so signaling and traffic, I'll, I'll just quickly go over that. We have wireless and uh, IP related protocols that are supported. Uh, we do all types of traffic from voice and video, digits, tones, even fax traffic. And it's UDP, TCP, uh, V4 and V6, and some secure transports as well. Um, on top of that, we'll get into this with a slide. You know, when we're creating this bulk calling and this traffic, we always want to be measuring the quality uh, of that. And uh, we're able to, with our hardware now, to uh, create this high density traffic, and we're confident that we can create it at, at very good quality. But as it goes through your network, as it goes through your device under test, we want to make sure that the quality is maintained, of course. So we have ways of measuring that. So as it relates to traditional maps versus maps HD, you can see here sort of the improvement in calls per second and number of simultaneous calls. And where I'll highlight is on the signaling and RTP voice. So with traditional maps, we could make 2,000 sessions and at, at 250 calls per second. With our HD version of this, again with the hardware, that increases to 20,000 at three, 350 calls per second. Okay, and that's per MAPS appliance, MAPS HD appliance. So you can, like I mentioned, you can stack these things and they can be controlled by a single uh, uh, MAPS controller, master controller, and you can expand on that 20, 40, 60, and so on. 
Now, as we as we are building this call generation and this load generation, we we do it in a way that um, we give you options on how to do that, multiple load characteristics. So at first here, we have a fixed load, which is pretty obvious, a ramp up load, which the call rate increases per, you know, as the duration increases, uniform load, um, the minimum call rate and a maximum call rate is defined and everything is in between there uniformly. Uh, a normal load, um, which you know, is sort of a bell curve type thing, sawtooth and a step. So these options are available to you through the software as a load generation characteristics. Um, these can be used for you know, stability and stress testing and simulate real world loading characteristics. Um, it's, very, it's very nice with this product that you have the repeatability. So uh, regression testing is very important today and you're able to generate a, a load characteristic that you may want to repeat, very precisely repeat uh, for maybe you're testing a hardware device, um, you're responsible for that device and you have a new firmware that goes on that device and you want to repeat the exact same test you did on the previous firmware just to make sure that things are, are, are still okay. We can do that and we can reliably do that. So it's an easy to use GUI, it's, um, it's sort of an overview uh, load generation GUI um, and users can create specific loading scenarios. Now when we talk about the traffic, um, as these calls and these sessions are being generated, um, we, we have the option, the RTP traffic uh, can be specified and generated as well. So we're not just blasting, for instance, in the IP world, if we're talking about SIP and RTP, we're not just blasting signaling, SIP signaling, creating calls very quickly. We're actually sending voice, video, uh, digits, tones, all these types of things at your discretion uh, can be sent when these sessions are established. And then we're measuring actually the quality of that during the bulk calling scenario. So here's just a diagram where, you're, where you see maybe two maps uh, HD devices on in different ends of the network in your test lab or something. And you're creating all these calls and some of the calls may have video, some of them may have voice, some of them may be fax calls. We can also do packet impairments so we can actually simulate and jitter packets as they leave our product for, per se if you want to test your jitter buffer or things like that. So all of these types of things from the specific feature testing type domain, um, so if you want to test a particular thing on your device or your network, for instance your jitter buffers, this product is very good at doing that and it can do it on a ones and twosie basis or it can do it on a thousands basis, okay? So it has the ability now to expand to very high density with this MAPS HD. Diagram shows on the bottom left here uh, a person uh, remote scripting and remote client access. So I'll briefly tell you in a slide or two uh, that the MAPS product has a, it basically has a, an open interface to it where you can create your own sort of wrapper or your own automation um, if you so desire. One thing we'll talk about a little bit later in the presentation is something called packet scan. If you're not familiar with that, that is our non-intrusive monitoring uh, component of our offering. And it sits there, it's very, everybody knows about Wireshark, so I'll just mention that it's a similar methodology to Wireshark in the sense that it's monitoring the traffic and it's analyzing it. Now, what we're going to introduce today is the packet scan HD which again has a hardware component to it that allows a tremendous amount of um, call volumes to be analyzed simultaneously. This screen here, um, if you're familiar with our maps in the past, this will look very familiar to you. This is the basic maps screen. It does not change from our traditional maps to our high density maps product. 
the same interface there. If you know the if you know the the traditional one, you'll know how to use this one without any problems. Nothing has changed. Um, the screen is sort of set up in a manner that all of your sessions are located at the top here. Uh, you know your your number of sessions are located here. If you have a thousand, two thousand, three thousand sessions, they're all listed here. All of them are individually uh, controlled and set up. The distribution sort of lies on top of that, the load distribution, and then you can start it. Individual sessions can be looked at uh, from a protocol perspective. So you'll have a ladder diagram with a full decode if you'd like. So we, we still have maintained sort of, I, I call it our feature testing or our manual testing, our ones and twosy type testing where we're setting up a couple sessions here and there to uh, to test maybe certain features, even with this additional capacity in this bulk calling. Once these sessions are created, you can transmit pre-recorded voice files, um, and we support narrowband and wideband codecs, AMR, uh, EV, EVS, EVRC, and so on. We also have the ability to transmit pre-recorded video traces, and we support H.264 and H.263. As I was mentioning, um, while all this traffic is being generated, it's very important to make sure that the quality is being maintained. So we have a number of methods that GL uses to do that. We have what I call an audio-based method for voice quality, which is we, from maps to maps, we're sending and recording voice files across the network. And those voice files, the recorded voice files, the audio of the recorded voice files is actually sent to algorithms in ITU standard telecom algorithms that will c compare the, the audio of the sent file versus the recorded file and give you a score. Those are sort of the best way to evaluate voice quality because they're actually looking at the audio. Okay. Now, in the packet world, in the RTP world, we can just look at the packet statistics as well. And some people are are probably familiar with something called uh, MOS and R factor within the packet domain. So it's counting packets. It's it's making sure that they come in order. It's making sure that they're not jittered. It's looking at the codec, and it's giving you an estimated voice quality based on that. And we also provide video quality and um, with the MDI, which is the Media Delivered Index. So throughout all of the testing with this product, we, um, we're always suggesting that our customers um, check the quality and not just blast the network and sort of uh, see what happens. We have to, we have to maintain uh, a certain quality there throughout, and we have ways of spot checking that or testing and checking every session that we create. I mentioned on my um, previously um, uh, that this Maps HD product has automation built into it. So we have schedulers built in, so you can set up a schedule to start at midnight while you're not even at the office. Um, you can repeat different scenarios. You can set up regression testing, regression testing to run overnight. Um, you can actually build build your own sort of wrapper program to control the maps. And we support clients like Java, Python, Tickle, and so on. Along with that, and I'll briefly mention it, the MAPS product, uh, which is very important, the reports and statistics that are available with this MAPS HD product are the same as they used to be with the traditional MAPS. So we have the ability to um, show you network level statistics as well as session level or call level statistics. So with that, um, that is a summary of our MAPS HD product. Now I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Bandon. He will inform you about uh, another MAPS hardware spinoff that we have, and it's called Packet Load. Um, this is for generating high volumes of mobile GTP traffic. So um, I will hand off to Bandon. Bandon, you can take over, and then I will, I will come back in after Bandon is finished with a few slides here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Matt. 
Uh, hello everyone. Uh, I would like to thank Matt for a brief introduction uh, given to this generating high volumes uh, of mobile GTP traffic. So basically like uh, to begin with, uh, I would like to give a brief uh, um, introduction about this GTP. So GTP stands for uh, GPRS tunneling protocol. So why it is used? So basically this GPRS tunneling protocol is used to carry this general packet radio services uh, within these wireless networks such uh, GSM, EMTS and the LTE networks. So basically this GTP is categorized into three different variants like GTPC which stands for control plane, uh, GTPU uh, which is for the user plane and then the GTP prime. So basically in this particular webinar uh, we are going to concentrate more on the GTPU that is the user plane. So uh, I will just give an introduction like GTPC is used within the GPRS network in the core network for the signaling between the gateways like SGSN uh, and the GGSN or the serving gateway and the PDN gateways. So basically uh, this control plane is used to exchange uh, this tunneling information uh, which we call it as a control plane signaling so that uh, a tunnel can be established to uh, carry the user data. So now comes the GTPU uh, which is used for carrying the user data that is nothing but a mobile data within the GPRS core network and uh, this can also be used between this radio access network and the core network. So basically this GTP <coughs> uh, basically carrying the mobile data uh, throughout this wireless networks. Uh, it is from the radio access networks towards the core network. So this is just an overview. Uh, so basically uh, in the coming slides uh, I will try to explain how we are generating the huge number of uh, this user plane data and why it is required uh, in terms of uh, uh, real-time equipment testings. So basically uh, uh, GL has a product called uh, maps with a packet load. So this packet load uh, is a device which is used to generate uh, this high density of a mobile data. So basically this packet load is combined with the maps so that maps will be controlling this uh, packet load uh, in order to pass all the tunneling information and generate the high density of traffic. So basically we have two different variants. Uh, one is the 4 gig device that is uh, it, it is having a 4 ports uh, of a 1 gig and it can be used with uh, all the GTP protocol variants like IUPS, GNGP, LTS1 and the EGTP. Similarly we have another device uh, which is of 10 gig. Uh, so here also we have 4 ports uh, each of 10 gig so bidirectional it can generate up to 80 Gbps of traffic. So this is just a um, difference between the two different hardwares and uh, its hardware specifications. So basically uh, packet load 1 gig, uh, it's a uh, montable rack system, one new rack system which is having uh, 4 into uh, 1 gig <coughs> electrical and uh, fiber ports and it has a one console port USB 2 version and it has a system storage of around 1 TB to 500 GB and the system memory of 16 GB. Coming to the main performance section, uh, it can generate the bidirectional 8 Gbps of uh, user defined traffic. Uh, using this device we can simulate up to 60k simultaneous subscribers uh, in any of the networks. The device supports the stateful HTTP, UDP and a PCAP playback uh, kind of uh, traffic generations. Uh, it can su support up to 20 million concurrent TCP flows. This zero transaction is nothing but um, establishing only the TCP sessions and terminating them without any of uh, user data. So it is just uh, there is no transaction of uh, actual HTTP packets. It's just like we establish the TCP and then terminate them. And we can configure a variable of uh, I mean variable post and the get ratio in terms of uh, this HTTP traffic generation. Coming to 10G. Uh, it's a 2U rack mountable system uh, which is having 4 into uh, 10 gig of fiber and electrical ports which is again uh, one console of uh, USB 2. 
coming to this performance again uh, it generates bidirectional 80 gbps of traffic and we can simulate up to uh, 500k simultaneous subscribers which is uh, a huge number in terms of uh, when we want to load any of the particular network with a very high number of uh, simultaneous users it can generate up to 2 million plus tcp and http transactions per second uh, the zero transaction size support uh, even available on the 10 gig device and uh, this variable post and get ratio is available on the 10 gig device as well so now let's see uh, i mean why why such huge kind of uh, um, packet data need to be simulated and um, how it affects uh, the testing so in this particular slide, I'm going to explain uh, how it will uh, affect the testing uh, in terms of real time. So when Matt started explaining about uh, how this internet usage is um, expanding day by day, uh, he has given the statistics about 2017 and uh, 60 seconds, what is the usage? So as we all know, uh, the traffic intensity is increasing. The network elements uh, within this wireless network, uh, such as these switches, gateways, routers, it, they all need to be tested against this high load uh, so that it can provide the constant QoS, that's quality of service. Due to this increase in the traffic, uh, it can impact various impairments uh, such as it can introduce an errors, delays, congestion, or it can degrade the quality. So now uh, before uh, <coughs> deployment, uh, so this need to be tested against a very high load. So in such scenarios, uh, so this packet load comes into a handy where uh, it can generate a very high data uh, depending upon the capacity of uh, the core network. So what this uh, particular solution does? So I have uh, two slides, uh, one with explaining of uh, this 3G network and a 4G network. So I will just brief out. Uh, so this solution allows a uh, user to encapsulate the generated packets uh, packet data within the GTP headers and transmit through the gateways. So we can see that this packet load uh, sits at the radio access network site uh, and also at the internet site. So basically the data has to pass through uh, these gateways, SGSN and the GGSN. So once uh, the signaling is done, and uh, the tunnels are created. Uh, so basically the question comes like, why this tunneling and uh, other concepts are required? So basically it does, uh, this tunneling uh, provides a mobility. So whenever a user uh, attaches to an LTE or a UMTS network, so it provides him the uh, mobility where uh, he can have a multiple bearers created. That is nothing but uh, multiple data pipes. These tunnels are nothing but a data pipes where the traffic will be carried uh, per user. So within this network, uh, the user data has to be segregated between uh, the multiple users. And, and most important is each user can have uh, multiple tunnels so that depending upon uh, which kind of service he is trying to use. So basically for browsing, uh, it can happen over a very default tunnel uh, where we can say non-guaranteed uh, bitrate. So there is no guarantee of a bitrate. It just provides him an IP connectivity so that he can connect to an internet, browse, uh, and so on. So when it comes to uh, the IP call, like Skype or watching on YouTube, so that requires a particular of QoS so that there is no buffering happening. There is no discontinuity in the call. Uh, voice quality has to be very strong. So in such cases, uh, with respect to the default, the other tunnels are also created. So those has to be defined with a particular quality of service. So in such cases, uh, so we need to generate uh, depending upon the quality of service that needs to be provided for a particular user. So we have to be uh, generating that much of data uh, with respect to each mobile. So in this case, uh, this particular application allows uh, so that we can generate a different kind of traffic at a different rate. So it allows the simultaneous simulation of multiple sessions per user to verify that bearer allocation bandwidth at the endpoints are constant. So this is with respect to 3G. Uh, similarly, on the on the LTE network, yeah, uh, this is on the 4G network. 
So again, the uh, data has to go through the serving gateway and the PDN gateway. So whatever the mobile, uh, which is, the data is generated from the mobile, uh, has to pass through these gateways. So the main uh, thing of these gateways, uh, the data will be confidential. I mean, the, it provides uh, security to the data being generated. So these GTP tunnels uh, are very much important in terms of uh, segregating the different types of QoS and providing the quality of service to the each user. So this packet load can fit into even the 4G network where uh, this packet load with a maps E node B can generate a very high load of traffic. Uh, and uh, at the internet side, uh, it correlates with the traffic being generated since we generate a stateful kind of HTTP traffic. So maps can give you a, a basic level of statistics, like what is the total number of calls being placed? Uh, what is the number of active calls? We can see this is 100K calls are being active. And this graph represents what is the calls per second, what is the simultaneous calls, and so on. Coming to this uh, packet load related statistics, uh, this GTPU, so it provides a different kinds of statistics like uh, um, what is the SYN burst rate, uh, what is the total number of SYN packets sent out, what is the total number of uh, HTTP packets that are being sent out like GET and POST. Similarly, it also provides the TCP latency statistics and the HTTP latency statistics. So those we have put together and come up with a user-defined graphs where uh, we are representing those values in a graph so that it can easily understood by the users. Similarly, these statistics also includes uh, what is the bandwidth on the each port and uh, what, is, what is the total number of uh, users that are being connected, what is the current simultaneous users that are active now. Uh, so we can, it provides uh, still a lot more of uh, such statistics. Um, I'm just trying to represent few of them, which are very important. So this will show what is the bandwidth on each port. So since it has an four ports, so it's generating both TX and RX at the rate of uh, 952, uh, I mean, at an average of 900 Mbps on each port. So I think uh, this is the most important part uh, using this packet load. We can stress uh, the gateways in order to check their performances. I think that's it from uh, this packet load side. Uh, I would like to hand over uh, the next uh, session, which is a packet scan. Uh, the Matt will be handling Matt will be handling the next section, that is packet scan, which is an um, non-intrusive way of uh, <coughs> capturing these wireless networks or any wipe networks and analyzing uh, the different types of calls, giving the CDRs, uh, active call graph, and so on. Uh, I would like Matt to uh, take over from this point. Okay, thank you, Bandon. I appreciate that. Um, so, what we will do here, since we're uh, we're on good timing, we're at forty minute mark. We will. Uh, I just want to remind you before we finish up. This this last section is is fairly short, and um, I'll just remind you that please. Uh, your questions, you can type those into the webinar you know menu bar there and Sanjeev is monitoring those. And at the end of this few slides to go here, we can open up a discussion and we can talk about some of these things. So um, as, we, as we move through the end here, please go ahead and, and submit your questions for him. So that, thank you again, Bandon. Thank you for showing that. Um, this particular section of our webinar is now transitioning a little bit. What we've seen so far has been uh, simulation uh, related products, uh, the Maps HD and the um, the packet load. Now, those were intrusive products, as we know. This solution that I'm going to talk about, this packet scan solution, packet scan HD solution, is a non-intrusive monitor. I mentioned it earlier in one of the slides that um, similar in nature to what everybody knows about Wireshark, where you're monitoring and you're analyzing protocol analysis of, of the network. Uh, this product is similar in that nature. It expands on that type of uh, capabilities uh, tremendously, but um, but it's similar in nature and where it where it can sit in a network. Um, 
So what we're talking about is, is a product called Packet Scan HD. And as I was mentioning with maps earlier, uh, this is now a, uh, an evolution of our traditional Packet Scan product. Packet Scan was a product that was a software only product that you could purchase from GL and you could put on a laptop or on a server system. And again, it would use the integrated uh, network card. Um, and it would it would be analyzing similar to Wireshark the traffic going uh, that it sees there that's presented to that network card. Now, what does it do uh, in in a sense is it's monitoring the protocol, all the IP traffic. We've at GL we have a a, a vast major uh, variety of a voice and video and RTP related analysis tools. So this packet scan has always been great for monitoring the RTP and monitoring the voice sessions, recording the voice sessions, uh, looking at them in real time, looking at the jitter, at the missed packets, at the MOS scores, all in real time or in post process. So the focus with packet scan has always been on the voice, on the video, on the RTP. With Packet Scan HD, everything remains the same as far as the look, the feel of the interface. Everything remains the same as far as the feature set. What we've done is, again, we've added hardware to the product. And what that has allowed us to do is to analyze even more at each interface. So we've added an, uh, a hardware component, which is, again, a 4 by one gig or a 2 by 10 gig. Uh, NIC. So that allows us to capture and process very high volumes of traffic. And I won't read over every little thing on the screen, but uh, and I've, I've touched on a few of them, but we support a wide variety of protocols which will be listed. There's a, a very uh, developed and mature filter on the front end of Packet Scan and Packet Scan HD, so we can filter in certain traffic, filter out traffic that's not important to us or we can open up the pipe and look at everything. So those types of things. Now with Packet Scan and with Packet Scan HD, we also, as I mentioned, are very focused on the quality of service metrics. So we have built into it the E model and the R factor and the MDI for video, the media delivery index, uh, jitter, delay, gap, round trip delay, all of these things. We analyze inbound DTMF, MF, and out of band events. So all of this is there. We've got very intelligent triggering mechanisms where a user can set up if I sense the MOS score is going below a certain threshold, then I want to take some action. I will show you those things briefly in the in the following slides. Uh, very quick overview. <clears throat> you're monitoring a network, maybe you're in between um, uh, two network devices. Packet scan can sit on a tapped port. It can be fiber, it can be copper, it doesn't matter. Uh, it can be a, a, a mirrored port set up on a particular switch. You have to present the traffic to the packet scan hardware, packet scan HD, and then all of the analysis capabilities are available to you as a user. I mentioned uh, a slew of protocols that Packet Scan HD supports. Again, very similar to Packet Scan. It's, it's the same list and all the codecs that we have. We've we've taken a lot of pride over the years in adding protocols, adding adding these codecs. So we think we've we've uh, we've taken care of most everything that anybody's asked us for, including some very specialized things. I mentioned at the first slide that GL will be going to an air traffic control, uh, air traffic management show in March. We've actually adapted this MAPS product and the packet scan product. Since the flexibility is there with both of these products, we've adapted it to a very uh, interesting variant of SIP, which is called SIP ED137B which that protocol is, uh, is used and has all these special requirements for air traffic management. So I mention it only because the flexibility has, has been built into our products over the years and 
from the foundation so that we can make a small little tweak here and there and be able to help a very special niche market like air traffic management. Okay, so these types of things are, are sort of from the foundation of these products been built into them. Okay, so when we're talking about packet scan HD, you may want to know, of course, so what's the advantage to the traditional packet scan product that we have? Well, uh, when we're monitoring the signaling and bi-directional RTP of a, of a let's just say, a, a SIP and RTP voice call, packet scan is, ca is capable of about 2,000 different sessions, 2,000 calls. Packet scan HD is 20,000, so a significant improvement there. Um, and so you can bring this product to market uh, and advertise it for high density performance monitoring. Okay. The main screen, the traffic analyzer screen with packet scan HD is very familiar to, to customers and to representatives that have used packet scan before. At the top pane, we have all connected sessions, all active sessions, all sessions in the past, whatever you may want to show here, uh, it's, it's flexible. Um, you can show all sessions, you can say, show all voice sessions, you can show all video sessions, you can, so there's a drop down there that allows you to change those things, as well as selecting the protocol. So in this case, we're selecting SIP, and we're showing all SIP calls on this particular uh, network interface or this particular tap point on your network, and its active calls right now is in the neighborhood of 250, okay? Now this is some sim simple uh, graph that gets updated in real time. These counters on the right-hand side, again, get updated in real time. It shows the number of calls, active calls, completed calls, all the way down, uh, the bandwidth that's being used. So a, a litany of things here that we show um, and we can get very specific into the protocols here where you will see different statistics based on that from an overview network perspective. Now, <clears throat> as you're looking at this, you may want to zero in a little bit to a particular call. You can select that call, that call of interest in real time, and it will show you the ladder diagram and the decode of that call. So this the, this screen becomes now a little bit of a troubleshooting type thing. You're looking at first at network overall health. Now you've zeroed into a particular call of interest or a session of interest, and you got the full decode of the signaling, as well as you'll see you have the ability to listen in on that call in real time, record the audio from the beginning of the call, to a WAV file for pro processing later. So there's a litany of things that you can do uh, on an individual call, and we're showing that here. Um, now, <laughs> the slide's purpose was for protocol selection, which I had already mentioned, but you can see here that I'm showing uh, SIP calls on this particular one and LTE calls here. So it's just a, a way of selecting the different protocols. Again, when you're zeroing in on a particular call, you can show in tabular format some of the statistics from that particular call. So this shows you the signaling parameters in this pane, the audio parameters in this pane, with including all of your packet statistics, jitters, out of sequence packets, all of that kind of packet loss, um, your, your MOS scores, all of that is shown here as well as if it's a video call, we've got all of the video statistics for that call. So the, these, these, these statistics are all valuable for looking at what's going on on your network. And now with this Packet Scan HD, the main point that needs to be made with the Packet Scan HD is this is now, uh, you know, we've increased our capacity with this. So you can do this on a, on a bigger or fatter pipe. Uh, quickly, this slide shows a video call, so we've, we've looked at a video call, we're, we're focused on a video call, and now you've got some video statistics. This is a particular call, is H.263, and um, 
with a call duration of about a minute. Okay. Um, graphs are an integral part of Packet Scan and Packet Scan HD. Um, they are available on a network level or on an individual call level. So on an individual call level, we're showing here the gap graph so, um, and the mean opinion score graph. So how, how was the mean opinion score throughout the duration of the call as well as the jitter? Okay, so these things are all available. We've got, uh, you, you can actually see the tabs down here on all the different things that we show. If you click on the wave graph, you're actually looking at the wave graph or the spectral display in real time. So if you're monitoring a call that's happening currently in real time, you're able to see, listen at the wave graph and the spectral graph, okay? Um, so, sort of another feature on Packet Scan HD is the filters, triggers, and actions. So, when we're talking about filters, we're talking about you know f filtering in specific calls or calls of interest. And these calls of interest and events of interest can include a specific or a range of IP addresses or calling numbers, uh, certain QoS uh, thresholds. If, if in, in a sense, if the MOS score drops below a certain threshold, then I want to start taking an action. So when these events happen, actions can be taken, and the actions include maybe saving the trace file for further looking, further analysis, recording the specific wave files of both sides of the call, or sending email alerts, or all of the above. Okay, can do those things. So um, depending on your need, there it can be monitoring your network. Uh, in the middle of the night, a certain um, call may come up of interest to you, and it can store it to, a, to the hard drive for further looking, for further analysis. The last thing I'll mention before we do a Q&A session is something that is called Net Surveyor Web, and that is built on top of packet scans and packet scan HDs. So you could actually have multiple packet scan HDs monitoring at different locations in your network. And we'll call those probes, so packet scan HD probes. Those probes can report back, send the traffic back to a data storage device, which would be, we'll, we'll call that an Oracle centralized database. That database is now storing all the information from multiple probes in the network. That information is stored, collected, backed up, archived, and so forth. Now, with that information being there and accessible, we've got, we've built on top of that a browser or a web server. So a, a user with proper credentials can log into that web server and then mine the database for certain uh, statistics, events, calls, whatever you may do, whatever you may need. So you can, you can look at things such as uh, all of the call CDRs, the call detailed records, if you see on the, on the screenshot to the back, it's listing every call. And with that, you actually have, and it's not being shown very well here, but you actually have the both sides of that particular call RTP session. So you can look at it. You can look at, you know, you had a certain number of packets lost on that particular call. You can search for that call if you know the calling number, or the IP address, or something. So all of those things are available. All that data is in the database from multiple probes, and now you have access to it, and you just mine the database through this interface that we provide. Okay, you can, in the graph sort of form, you can customize this. This is very customizable. Um, it's SQL based. We we've given uh, some standard graphs that you know, we think are probably some, some representative of, of, of about 50% of what you may want. But then we will work with you or you can work yourself to create SQL statements to mine that database and show exactly what you want to see. So we can show MOS scores over time in the network. We can, um, this in itself has triggering mechanisms. So a scenario such as if the MOS score from a certain packet scan HD probe that's located in Atlanta, Georgia drops below uh, 3.8 for a duration of 
10 minutes alert me. Those types of things are possible, okay? So you can come up with these types of queries and these triggers and these alarms. So that is the back end. This Net Surveyor Web is the back end, the storage component of all of these packet scan HD probes that may be sitting out there if you have multiple. So that sums up uh, some of our high density offerings for IP networks, wireless networks. Uh, we thank you and we will open it up now for questions. And while we're collecting those questions, uh, just make a couple quick announcements. Our next webinar will probably be late February or early March. Um, we may do a webinar after the show, which I'm listing third here, that show is in um, early March. So the next webinar may be later in March, but you can keep an eye on our website for the announcements there. We'll put it up on the topic and, and so forth. Um, we have one announcement here about a product that we're, we're very excited about called the V-Mobile. It's a voice quality product, very much in sort of the same domain as if you're familiar with our, our dual Utah product and V-Quad product that intrusively does voice quality testing under uh, across any network because it interfaces at endpoints. So we've got a V-Mobile, which is a, is a very mobile version of that dual Utah that will be coming out here first quarter. So with that, Sanjeev, uh, we can open up for some questions if, if anybody would like to ask one. Uh, he's asking, uh, do you have any statistics for end-to-end uh, -end delay and RTP packet delay? Yes. Um, yes, we do. Um, so within the packet scan product, yeah, within the packet scan product, we have delay that's being shown, um, you can see it here, and it's basically gather, gathering that from the RTCP uh, packets. So within packet scan, we show it at that point. Within our maps, we can show that as well. So um, Bandon, uh, do you have any comments beyond that? I mean, maps can show it, I do know that. Um, and we're typically gathering that information from RTCP packets, I believe, is that correct? Okay, well, Bannon, I can't hear him, but uh, I'm certain that uh, I'm fairly certain that RTCP packets we can show that type of information. So we do show it here, and um, I can find out a little bit more uh, from some of our other engineers to see what other methods we we have for showing end-to-end -end delay. But you can kind of see that the average delay is shown, and then we have a max-min delay on each session there. And it's by and it's and it's per direction, so in the east and west direction of the call. Okay. Yeah. Can we know the uh, difference between the regular maps, which we are familiar with, uh, uh, and the high density maps model? Well, yeah. So the the regular maps, which. Um, it has, again, been a very popular product that's out there and being used um, in a wide variety of protocol simulations um, versus the MAPS HD. Um, it's very simple. The only thing that's different from the perspective of user interface or, you know, just users is that the MAPS HD introduces this hardware component. So the hardware component provides GL with the ability now to sort of have a very standard hardware, high horsepower hardware that we can generate a lot more calls, a lot more sessions, a lot more RTP sessions. So we were at the mercy of the, the PC, that the host PC, we'll say, and the NIC that's built into the host PC. Now, over the years, we were buying, um, you know, certain network interface cards that were better than others, but now we've got dedicated hardware ready to go, which we have control of, and it gives us, you know, a lot more power. So the main difference is the capacity. Interface, user interface perspective will look identical to the maps that you know and that you've been using. 
like uh, what are the different kinds of traffic uh, which can be simulated using the packet load I think Bandhan can answer this. Uh, yes, um, using this packet load, uh, we can generate the HTTP traffic. Uh, it's a straightforward HTTP traffic which can be generated. As well as we have a pcap playback. Uh, so we have we can playback the pre-captured uh, pcap files. Uh, these pcap files can be loaded into a packet load, and then we can um, playback the same uh, pcap files. So pcap file can contain uh, different kinds of traffic. Thank you, Bandhan. Uh, we have another question. I'll just unmute uh, Victor. Uh, hello, Victor. Oh, hello. Um, just yeah. a quick question. If I were to try to insert generate impairments on a network, I understand you know your, your products, um, but I want to do two things. I want to generate an impairment, you know, the delay, jitter, etc., and just see how the my end equipment performs. And then also, I'd like to just monitor the network as it's running. So, what do I? Would I need both products, the uh, the, the the packet uh, the packet scan as well as the maps, or can I, you know, do the equivalent of both types of measurements? You know, one I'm impairing myself to make sure I see how far the equipment can go, and the other is I'm just monitoring the network all by itself to see what's happening. Yeah. Um, so I'll take a I'll take a shot at this, Ben, and you can jump in as, as well if you'd like. The, the, to monitor the network, yeah, your best bet is packet scan. Okay, so packet scan, uh, depending on your network, you know, density and bandwidth and so forth, you may be able to get away with the regular packet scan, not the HD version. We'd have to see that uh, and, and and find out. The MAPS product can introduce impairments, okay? So you can, make, um, you can make calls from end to end through your network, through your devices, and it can int introduce impairments. Um, <clears throat> and then we can see how your network handles that. That's one method of doing it. We also have um, another product that wasn't even mentioned today that um, Again, it's a hardware-based product, but it basically acts as a network simulator. So that product can dial in exactly. So you basically put that product in your network somewhere, so you know, right in front of a switch or something, a main backhaul line into a switch or something, and you can dial in exactly how much jitter you want to have happen on that. You can you can specify, you know. For this particular VLAN, I want to do it, or you know, there's a lot of flexibility in how to do it. So it's it's actually now become really a network inline network appliance. There, it's a hardware-based appliance that you can sort of you can you can set up. I want to out of order packets. I want to jitter packets. I want to drop packets. I want to, at 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 a very precise rate with that product and it does it all at the hardware level so it's not um, you know so it's very precise is I guess the, the point I want to make there right. so it depends on exactly you know what you you're looking to do but th with with those three products um, and I'm not suggesting that you need all three or anything like that but with those three products I believe we would probably have exactly what you need covered it's just a matter of understanding maybe in a little bit more detail how you want to set it up, maybe do a network diagram and so forth. Yeah, um, I, I agree. I, no, I appreciate it. Right, exactly. Size, capacity. This is small, small right. density compared to the stuff you guys are capable of. But I understand. That's a, you, you answered my question. But yeah, if there is a, like you said, a hardware and impairment monitor. You know, there's equivalent thing you didn't even talk about yet too. So great. That, that, yeah, yeah. And if it, and if it is a if it is a small you know a smaller network than than what we're talking about and what the kind of the focus is here, you know, you may be able to get away with like our traditional maps product, um, which is very strong in the sense of creating these impairments, um, you know, on a session by session basis. If you only want to, let's just say we want to create ten calls or something, and you want to impair the RTP at a certain at a certain rate, you you can do that very easily. Um, yeah. Thank okay. you. No problem. Yeah, he's asking what are the requirements to take before the deployment of a GL Maps packet load in a live mobile network? Uh, 
So, so basically like uh, this packet load is on a hardware device and uh, which will sit uh, at the radio access network. So MAPS uh, is, is a kind of a software based application uh, which we have to install in a Windows based server. So we need to have a Windows based server to install the MAPS which will control the packet load. So packet load is on a separate hardware and uh, um, uh, depending upon what is the DOT. Um, so basically like if SGSN is the DOT then uh, it, it will act as RNC uh, if I consider this IUPS network uh, at the radio access network. And then one, uh, one device we will be having at the uh, other end on the internet side so that it can generate uh, so much of load. Yeah. Thank you, Bandhan. Uh, I think we are done with so, the Yeah, questions. in general, yeah, just to follow up on that question as well. I mean, what we're talking, you know, the subjects that we're talking about here are, are, are on the complex side, of course. And, you know, what we traditionally do with our, with our customers is we, um, well, at least I like to try to start with a network diagram on, on what you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish. That, that usually, you know, in a pictorial form, that usually indicates, you know, what your goal is. It's always about trying to find your goal, so what protocol you're using. So when we're deploying this MAPS packet load, you know, we, we need to understand some of those sort of essential questions. Um, even with MAPS, you know, there's a litany of uh, protocols and, and codecs that you may want to test. So we just have to have some of those basic things and then we can um, put the package together for you to help out. And we, you know, we have our engineers that can definitely help along the way. The products are pretty simple to use out of the box. I mean, we've kind of, we've kind of pride ourselves on you can open it up. It's a complex subject, but you can open up the product and you can kind of get going pretty quickly. So, um, you know, we're, but we but we have people here that are experts on these maps products and on the software and the script generation and so forth. So. Uh, it's a matter of trying to understand what your goal is, and then we can probably make it work for you uh, in that sense, okay? Yeah, thank you, Matt. Thank you, Bandhan. Yeah, okay. Well, if that's it, we, we appreciate all the people that have joined us today. We are excited about these products, and um, thank you again for coming. Uh, look for uh, the next webinar on our, we on our website. It'll be probably in, in the March time frame, we're thinking, and uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Appreciate it again, and thanks a lot. Let us know if you need any questions answered and you want to follow up a little bit more, uh, you, you can you can do that. The, the way to do that, the easiest way to do that is to email info at gl.com. That will get the ball rolling on uh, follow-up. We'll, we'll, you know, tell us a little bit about the subjects you want to talk about, and we will make sure that we have the, the correct expert contact you back to discuss um, what's going on. So info at gl.com is pretty simple to remember, or you can give us a call. Thanks a lot, everybody. Talk to you later.